Next up, here on table one, it's Martin Gould against a suddenly red-hot Mark Williams. If you're just joining us and you didn't see his previous match on this table, which finished five or ten minutes ago, well, I must tell you, he beat Ricky Walden by three frames to one, winning the last three frames without conceding a point. In fact, he scored 343 points without reply, making breaks of 100 exactly, 76 and 144 total clearance. That's the highest of the group so far, eclipsing Walden's 140 a little earlier in his 3-1 defeat by Martin Gould. Well, there was a big pocket there, and Williams took full advantage. Very tight group, this. As it stands, six players have one victory. Only Walden is still on zero points. Of course, Dave Gilbert and Judd Trump have one victory from one match, so I suppose they're in the ascendancy, but it really is a tough one to call. And talking of Dave Gilbert and Judd Trump, they're the next attraction over on table two. David Hendon will be commentating on that one. Five. It's really all turned around for Mark Williams. He won the first frame this morning against Ben Wollaston and led 45-0 in the second. Eventually, they lost it on the black, and then Wollaston, with breaks of 99 and a run of 101, initiated by an outrageous fluke, won 3-1. So it was vitally important for him to get a victory against Walden. As I said, he lost the opening frame, and then, since then, he's been absolutely in the zone. And given the position of the balls here, as Rob Spencer replaces the pink, there's no reason to think he won't put together a, a big break this time. Twenty-six. What a tremendous season it's been for Mark Williams. He's 42 years of age now part of that extraordinary class of 1992 that produced also John Higgins and Ronnie O'Sullivan. They were rookie professionals together. 20. And he's really come back into his own during the 2017-2018 campaign. 30. 
semi-finalist in the Riga Masters, quarter-finalist China Championship. He won the World Six Reds Championship. A little over £80,000 for that. Quarters again at the World Open and European Masters and the Shanghai Masters. And then the big one. He won the Northern Ireland Open in Belfast. Came back from 8-7 down to beat the Chinese teenager Yan Bing Tao 9-8. What a, a truly class act. Now a winner of 19 world ranking titles. 43. 44. With that, he's fifth on the all time list behind only Stephen Hendry, Ronnie O'Sullivan, John Higgins, Steve Davis. There's a new term entered the lexicon of late in snooker, the, the term triple crown, which alludes to the three big events that are shown on BBC television. 52. And he's won so many of them, including two world championships. Originally in the year 2000, he was king of the crucible, and then again in 2003. And what was so heartwarming about his victory in Northern Ireland was that it was his first ranking title in over six years. 59. So there's plenty of life in the old dog yet, as you can see. Five reds left, 67 on, so this is frame ball, quickly. Sixty-seven. Okay. I'll tell you what, the Williams eye is very much in. Seventy-two. Well, unless Martin Gould decides to come back to the table for some practice, which I'd be very surprised about, considering the format here, this is going to be four consecutive frames where Williams' opponent has not potted the ball. Ha, ha, ha. Now, you see, he does want to break that, that run. A little bit of table time will do Martin Gould no harm whatsoever because he was involved in our first match here on table one at 12 o'clock so it's been three hours or so since he's played. 15. Actually he's played two matches on table one this morning so yeah maybe it is surprising he's electing to clear up.
23. Cheers, Matthew. Thank you. Twenty eight. Thirty two. Thirty seven, forty three, passing your first frame, Matt. Well, the arm of Martin Gould Martin. lubricated there, but. It was purely academic because Mark Williams had started the scoring with a break of 73. So Gould's 50, just a means of getting a little bit of practice and getting the, the cue arm warmed. Mark Williams on a real run here after winning three frames without dropping a point against Ricky Walden. He comes back to the table and dominates the opener against Martin Gould. 1-0. Williams knows that form can be transitory in this format, having played countless Championship League matches over the years. And he knows that when, while he's in form, it's best to, to strike, get some wins on the board and pretty much assure himself of a semi-final berth tomorrow. You get the feeling though with this group, the way it's stacking up right now is that it's going to be very tight as to who does make those playoffs and indeed who finishes fifth to earn a place in group six here on Thursday and Friday. One thing I can tell you over on table two, Judd Trump, who started his second match of the day against Dave Gilbert, well he's taken the opening frame and of course Trump, the pre-group favourite, launched his round-robin campaign with a 3-1 win over Gould on table one a little earlier. He looks in pretty good, Nick. Second frame. Martin Gould's back. So the question here, can Gould stop the Williams tide? What a pot that is. A typical Mark Williams effort, that. Just picking it off. Shot to nothing. He would love the Reds to be more open than they are because a little nestling behind a ball colour would yield a lot more potentially if they were open. When the reds are packed like that, there's an inbuilt safety valve for the guy who's trying to escape. Now, I think theoretically he's left a red to middle, but it is only in theory.
the only thing that Williams was concerned about there was containment. It's a quite limited head-to-head -head series between these two over the years. Not that many meetings. They've played each other three times in the Championship League before. Gould has won two of those matches, including the most recent, a 3-2 win in Group 6 last year. As Williams is safety comes unstuck oh. The crowning achievement so far of Martin Gould's career was winning the 2016 German Masters and he actually defeated Mark Williams en route 5-4 in the last 32 a couple of years ago. 15. And Gould will be returning to the scene of his greatest triumph, the Tempodrome, next week. He has qualified for the German Masters again. That will do. Twenty. Use of check side to hold on the blue, and he does so almost inch perfectly. Yes, Gould qualified for the German Masters the week before Christmas with a couple of wins. Firstly over Alfie Burden, 5-3. And that was a match in which Burden had played some really good snooker. And then he booked his place in Berlin, did Gould, with a 5-4 win over 27. the 1997 world champion Ken Doherty. So a fruitful visit here to Coventry I think would boost confidence at just the right time. Over in Berlin, by the way, next week he takes on Gary Wilson 
in the, the last 32, with the winner to play either Jimmy Robertson or the defending champion, Anthony Hamilton. 39. Just a little wider the bunch. Forty one. He's not dissimilar to his opponent though, Mark Williams, in being able to dig out some tremendous pots. If Gould feels there's value in it, he will take it on. Single. Didn't see any value in the lone open red. And while that's a good start to the frame, the safety wasn't well short of the ball climb. Well, of course, Williams this morning was on the receiving end of an outrageous fluke by Ben Wollaston in the fourth and ultimately clinching frame of their match when Wollaston missed a red by a mile, fluked it and went on to make a century. I thought for a moment there he might be getting a fluke of his own, although it wouldn't have amounted to much. No position whatsoever. Well, from Gould's animated reaction, maybe he got a kick there. It would follow because he undercut the red. Whoa. Now then, we know Williams is in fine fettle. Can he pinch this frame from well behind? It's proving a good day for left-handers. I can tell you Judd Trump has doubled his advantage over Dave Gilbert on the other table. Trump now leads 2-0. Now with minimal effort there, Williams timed that shot 16. delightfully, got into the cue ball, bite on the white and that's why he avoided being closer to a cushion than he wanted to be. Well, how about that? Rob Spencer saying that Mark Williams caught the red with his cue. I certainly didn't see it. Williams looked mystified as well, but he left the table without any complaint whatsoever. And of course, Rob Spencer, a fine official, he would have been watching, he would know. 
Very unusual error that. Dropped in positional no man's land. Not on the ping. Blue. Turf pots left on green and yellow. Basically, it was one of those anywhere but there shots. Well, you can't fault the shot choice there, having established a 31-point lead. Gould decides to not only play safe, but knock the blue awkward in so doing. And now, Gould's relieved he did knock the blue safe. Well, quite smart. Thank you. And not only has he chipped it to the side cushion, but it's also on the side of the table that is not the best for a left-hander. Shorter pace on the yellow. Nevertheless, though, Williams right back in this now, only 16 adrift. Now is the angle there for any kind of position on the blue? The frown on Williams' face suggests not. But you know, he's a, a so-and-so for that. Sometimes he makes you think something is not what it is, or vice versa. And now he's one a good shot away here from 2-0. You're right. Told you it wasn't the best place for a left-hander. Stretching over at the max. And because of that, I'm not surprised he missed it. Mark Williams, 24. Frame, though, now wide open, especially with the blue running safe for Williams. Gould needs blue and pink. Williams needs blue, pink and black.
could be significant moments in this match. If Williams takes a 2-0 lead, obviously Gould well capable of turning it around, but it would be a sizable advantage, that, especially given the way he's been playing over the last handful of frames. I think Williams can see enough of the blue to pot it to the right-hand middle. Hates that shot. Not just because he missed the blue, but because he's left it on. Remember, Gould needs only the pink. Eleven in the frame. And makes no mistake. Well, Mark Williams might well have stolen that in the end. As it is, though, Martin Gould gets back onto level terms. It is a one frame each. A little bit more one-sided on the other table, I can tell you. Judd Trump, 2-0 up already on Dave Gilbert. And here, as you can see, on a break of 55, about to close it out, you would assume. Well, what a bounce that was. That was one of the most springy bounces off a cushion I think I've ever seen in my life. That was extraordinary. He was basically home and dry on the ready, played on, and then he had that absolute boomerang of a bounce. Well, he went for a plant in the deciding frame against Kyron Wilson in the Masters on Saturday that cost him dear in the end. That one was a risky plant, but he pulled it off. And now he's 52 in front with 51 on. Gilbert needing a snooker. If this red goes in, Trump home and host. Well, no doubt a, a source of annoyance for Trump, that. The break ends at 63. Gilbert with just a... the faintest ray of hope. But bear in mind, it's not just about getting the snooker he needs, it's also about getting high-value colours off the three remaining reds. Just going back to that bounce off the top cushion, that was mind-blowing. We see big bounces and variable bounce all around the world in snooker tournaments it's one of the occupational hazards I suppose but that was exceptional by taking the pink it does no harm at all to Gilbert he still needs just the one snooker so it looks Looks as though Judge Trump is going to win that match 3-0. We'll keep you informed with the late...
the slump of the shoulders says it all. Matting your one. Martin Gould, I think it's fair to say we can call him a, a Championship League specialist. He won the event in 2013, overcoming Ali Carter in the winners group final. And then was runner-up in 2014 to Judd Trump. They successfully defended this title, but Gould came the closest. Now, a little earlier in the match, Williams nestled in behind a ball colour, but because the, the Reds were tightly packed, it was quite an easy task for Gould to escape and not leave anything on. This is a little more troublesome. Short of pace, and the one thing he didn't want to do, he has done, i.e. leave a simple opening red. After so much brilliance in his previous match against Ricky Walden and then in the first frame of this one, that miss came as a real shock to the system. And in fact, where the cue balls come to rest, Williams can count himself extremely fortunate. Well, that wasn't a bad pot as it turned out, but any kind of positional thoughts had to go straight out of the window. Passing go one.
think consistency is one of the great enemies of of age or the other way around if you like as you get older you're still able to produce excellence but it comes and goes we saw that with Mark Williams last week in the Masters superb against Selby in winning the first round appreciably below his best when he lost against Corin Wilson in the quarterfinals and a microcosm of that is here today started off slowly then played brilliantly and now a few mistakes are creeping in Well, Martin Gill, 23. Well, how about Martin. that? The white into the pocket like a, a rabbit down a hole. And what was a, a ridiculously thin cut in fact was overcut well. now that was nicely played by Williams okay the red was right over the pocket but controlling the cue ball in that kind of circumstance never easy and I think Williams there was the sufferer of another big bounce off the top cushion. No. Dave Gilbert tried for snookers in the frame we saw a few moments ago, but ultimately in vain, and so Judd Trump has completed a 3 0 win. So two wins out of two so far for Trump, who has a couple of matches in the evening session here on table two tonight. First against Joe Perry, then against the man at the table here, Mark Williams. So until seven o'clock local time, Eight. snooker on table two is over. The only stream now is here on table one, this contest. 19. Thanks, you know, if he can't get on the, the last red, the red to the immediate left of the blue he could actually pop this one and lay a, a really tough snooker
when the old professionals were in a situation like this, in an exhibition, they used to turn to the crowd and say, anyone got any ideas? This could yield an awful lot of points. Well, well, there's the first seven. Mark Williams, seven. A free ball, of course, will be awarded, but it's no use to Williams whatsoever. The cue ball will be replaced. And by the time he gets out of this, Gould, if indeed he does get out of it, he might well need a snooker himself. He's already 28 behind. So if he misses it on a couple of occasions Mark from here... Was the cue ball tight on the cushion? He'll be 36 behind with 35 on, and then Rob Spencer will not be able to call the miss. Yeah. Mark. As snookers go, this is one of the most challenging you'll ever see. Foul, a miss. Mark Williams, four. Free ball. Again, a free ball. And Williams being 28 ahead. If he pots the pink and a black, that means he's going to be 36 in front with 35 on. But he would be... Actually, with the four penalty points, it's even more than that. But I think he's better off having the cue ball back because Gould has got to hit it now, this red. No ifs, buts or maybes. If he doesn't... He's 36 adrift, 35 on. And this is such a tough ask. Foul. Mark Williams, foul. Free ball. Yes, a free ball called now, but no miss, as I say, because... Gould needs one snooker. In fact, he's 39 behind with 35 on, so one four-point penalty snooker. Red, black and all the colours to force a respotted black. If he gets the chance. And now, with Williams potting the pink as a free ball, an extra red as it were. One. Gould needs a couple of snookers. Make that three. Five. Mark Williams, five. Normally, snookers are viewed as a means to an end, a way of forcing a scoring chance. But the snooker that Williams laid a, a moment or so ago actually was valuable in its own right. because the escape from Gould was almost impossible. And this snooker escape is no bargain either. Well done, Martin Gould. Needs the red to go safe. It has. Now then, that changes things. From needing three snookers, Gould requires only one. I'm not saying that Williams, with all of his experience, could have foreseen that happening. But when you're in a position as he was, hitting the balls hard and raising the possibility of that kind of thing is not the best way forward. So Gould, 39 behind, 
35 on. Well, we know his intentions now. He simply has to pot the black. If he doesn't, he's back to requiring three snookers. And this time, he decides enough's enough and concedes. And so, after the brilliance, the fluency that Mark Williams displayed in three consecutive frames in beating Ricky Walden. Then in the first frame of this match, well, frame three wasn't exactly fluent, but he showed all of his street smarts, all of his vast experience. He laid an absolute cracker of a snooker, and ultimately that's what got him over the line. And so Mark Williams now leads Martin Gould. He's regained the advantage at 2-1. As Rob Spencer's setting the balls back up it gives me the opportunity to tell you what's been happening so far if you're just joining our coverage of this group five in the championship league of 2018 well on table number two we've had four matches complete already ben wollaston beat mark williams 3-1 dave gilbert beat joe perry 3-1 perry then beat ben wollaston 3-1 and most recently judd trump with the aid of 120 break by the way has whitewashed dave gilbert 3-0 as for table one, this table, Gould started off beating Ricky Walden 3-1. Walden made 140 break in the first frame, then lost the next three. Trump, he beat Gould 3-1. And then Williams, assisted by a couple of centuries, including the highest break of the group so far, a 144 total clearance, defeated Ricky Walden 3-1. So it's a tight group. And if Williams could notch this frame up and have two wins out of three I think you'd be pretty satisfied Not the most comfortable queuing that, he did really well there Gould. I think it's fair to describe Martin Gould's season so far as mixed. He's had some good runs, no doubt about that. Last 16 of the China Championship. Semi-finalist in the International Championship and quarter-finals in the UK and the Shanghai Masters. 13. As we've said, he's also qualified for the German Masters, which is upcoming. But there's also been some disappointments in there as well.
tell you one thing about him though, Martin Gould, he's capable of beating anyone, any time. 20. Underestimate him at your peril. Little unlucky there though to leave yeah, sure. very hampered queuing for the ready one to depart. So now having to apply the extension to his queue and the extended rest as well to take on an alternative red. Twenty seven. He's 20th in the world rankings at the moment is Martin Gould. So I suppose the, the goal for him going towards the end of the season would be to try and break into the top 16 to avoid having to qualify for the Crucible. Be one of the top 16 seeds for the World Championship. That's very doable. Looks absolutely certain to qualify for the forthcoming World Grand Prix, which is open to the top 32 point earners from this season. And he's got a really good shot at being in the 16 players who make the Players' Championship in March. So between now and the end of the campaign, I think he's got an awful lot of snooker ahead. And if he can find some form here, it could be a lucrative end of season. Four. There, though, he just wanted to find some position. Well, this is the eighth match to be completed on both tables here today, and as yet we've not seen a contest go the full distance. This could be the first. Or after that, maybe not. Overcut the black by some way. Williams will have scanned the table and he likes no doubt what he sees. Eight. Not an obvious problem ball there. Nine. The only question mark was that red very close to the pink which has now been removed.
16. Didn't especially want to take this red so early, but forced it into it. 17. In an ideal world, would have liked to have left that red close to the middle pocket where it was for a contingency. Never mind, everything's still hunky dory. Thirty. Well, he's got to the stage now, Williams, where he will be annoyed if he doesn't win the frame at this visit. 55. Just overcooked that one slightly, mind you. 36. And this blue to bring up level board. 42. I think he's just a tad short of pace for the blue. Okay, he'll just dab it in and play the mid range red to top right. Now, he should pot this, we all know that, but there's a, a touch more pressure on it than otherwise have, would have been the case. 48. Twelve in front, yellow, green and brown required. Fifty five. Fifty eight. It looks as though for all the world Gould's overcut black off its spot on a break of forty one. That's cost him the match. 50. The Brown was frame ball, barring snookers. It's now signed, sealed and delivered. 67. It's a match in which Mark Williams started and finished very well because of the in off. The break ends at 73, so there's symmetry there. It was a first frame 73 that got him underway. A 73 clearance to pink seals the deal. Mark Williams has defeated Martin Gould by three frames to one. He's won two matches out of three so far, and the double world champion must be pleased with his progress in Group 5 so far.
Just to tell you, we'll be back tonight at 7 o'clock. The first match on table one, this table, will be Ricky Walden against Ben Wollaston. I'll be commentating on that one. Over on table two, we start out with Joe.